You stole Quentin's from later. That's all right. That's all right. Quentin's getting three minutes later. That's how we all, all the time comes away from Quentin in the end. Uh, next, we just got a few more tonight. How you guys doing tonight? Still, still with us? We got three more comments for you tonight. Uh, up next is a man that hosts Geeks Who Drink Over a Coops. You guys ever seen this? Really? It's fun. I won a glass there one time. It's an awesome time. It's Trivia Night at Coops. He's the host of Trivia Night at Coops, Geeks Who Drink. Yay. Wow! It's a classy crowd tonight. Um, or whatever. Uh, how about a big round of applause for Nathaniel David Hall, everybody! Slightly underwhelming. <laughs> we have glass there. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, greetings and hallucinations. My name is Nathan Hall. I was commonly known as a stand up comedian. I usually come to a room like this if there's like an Elf Quest tournament. Uh, so, very excited with my people. Uh, I will let you know that the best stand up comedy, this is an arrogant art form. The only stand up comedy that's worth a damn is comedy that tells the truth. It says things that need to be said if they're mean, they're uncomfortable, hurt people's feelings, makes them cry like a three year old, got an ice cream cone knocked out of their hands. Just get this out of the way right now. I vaguely resemble the illegitimate love child of Harry Potter and Frodo Baggins. <laughs> I kind of look like a hipster hobbit. It's like John Hobson from The Daily Show had sex with the Verizon Wireless guy. I know that's not biologically possible, but stick with me. I know that guy from Big Bang that he's doing stand up now, that's pretty cool. When you do stand up, people uh, suddenly want to uh, start telling you who they think you kind of look like. My favorite is this one girl who is like saying this like, but I mean this in a nice way. It's kind of like Elvis Costello had a really unsuccessful younger brother. <laughs> and he sells insurance and he's going through a tough divorce. Okay, it's for a lot of healing, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like they were awing for that marriage that never happened. That was awesome. <laughs> Do I look like marriage material? No. Um, I'll say something, ah, oh, please, I'm gonna say something sexy. Try and keep panties to a mid soak. <laughs> These glasses I wear, they're not just to enhance my already obvious on stage potent sexuality. <laughs> Nay, mandatory. Got this awesome disease, it's called Lazy Eye. If you guys have heard of it, it's very popular. 5% of the world has it. There's no cure, and they're not even buddy working on what? <laughs> If you go to Lens Crafters and tell them you have Lazy Eye, the autonomous just right sucks the view on a piece of paper and passes it back. <laughs> Be careful out there. It's like Hill Street Blues. It's, uh, it's like the weirdest, you always have a sweet spot where like I'm not blind enough where you get the free dog package. But I do, like it's bad enough that I drive like Mr. Magoo. I mean, whatever that category is. I just like the, uh, there's only been like one person who's overcome lazy eye and still become famous, uh, Forrest Whitaker, which is a man that I'm constantly compared to. Resemblance is striking. <laughs> I'll give you that. Uh, I just like, the, the, here's the thing, is like after like thousands of years, like if you crack over an iPhone, that looks like something stole from Roswell. But uh, the, the only thing they can do for this uh, is if they catch it when you're young, they make you wear an eye patch. Which is supposed to inspire that bad eye to get back on that horse and ride. <laughs> now, uh, it might be a, maybe you're not a math super genius like myself, but you could probably do this equation, which is like ugly, scrawny, short kid who sucks at sports and moves around a lot, plus eye patch, equals Mr. Popularity. <laughs> Eye patches are a great conversation starter at cocktail parties, but they will limit your Halloween costume options dramatically. <laughs> There's only a couple things you can be if you're the eye patch kid. You can be a pirate and that gets old and then you're like, eh, I don't know, I'd be an anime character no one recognizes. Uh, I could be a soap opera character named Bo. Burn victim, you know, there's not much. Last year's very controversial, I won is uh, Bo the clumsy pirate that likes to put out grease fires with rum. <laughs> I just like the, the name because it sounds like, see this here, this here's my good eye. It's working three jobs, goes to night school, wants to be a nurse. Tells out the homeless shelter on stay off. But this here, this is my lazy good for nothing, dumb shit lazy eye. Uh, this I don't do crap. Just lays around the house all day watching Chuck Norris film festivals. 
<laughs> Biggest problem was making sure all the stains on his shirt are the same color. Steal social security checks at old ladies' mailboxes. <laughs> Folks, for that job, I use a southern accent to emphasize the stereotype that people from the south are lazy and stupid. <laughs> a lot of say that because they spend a lot of time there. I'm not proud of it. It's like going to war or prison. Just keep your head down, try not to get assaulted. I like Christmas cards from those guys. Um, I'm going to do the, uh, the uh, comedian equivalent of uh, testing levels. I'm going to do two one-liners, and I'll be able to tell how smart you are, and also maybe how offensive I can be. It's for science. Number one, I think they should take pictures of missing transsexuals, put them on cards into half and half. All right, split the crowd. Two, legal questions this temper. Siamese twins, can they rape each other? So that's just considered aggressive masturbation. If you don't understand either of those jokes, you deserve everything that happens to you tonight. I will, uh, I'll say this, um, just in case they're here. Attention makers of pornography, please stop making women go down on dildos. This does nothing for the dildo nor the woman. It's not like a certain point the dildo's like, God dang girl, that's hot. Oh wait, I'm an inanimate object, I have no feelings. Why am I talking? Doesn't do anything for ladies either. How in good authority? Tastes like bike handlebars. <laughs> Would you put this electric toothbrush in your mouth? That'd be very erotic. I think the sweetest job is doing stand-up comedy because what people at HR tell you to not say at the Christmas party is our set list. And that's pretty sweet. The only thing that's better than that, the only thing, the, uh, the cake position is the guy that gets named gas stations. That guy has it made. He's got to learn like three things. He's like, I'm going on break. One, you have to hate spelling things correctly, right? Like purple passion. Two, your name has to indicate some type of forward motion because you don't want bums hanging out there all day. Hobos are bad for business. Three, there has to be some type of crude sexual metaphor that would make a 12-year-old boy giggle. <laughs> Examples include come and go, Pump and munch. <laughs> I have a dream that one day when I retire from standing out comedy, I'm up at gas station, I'm call the fucking run. I'll spell with three K's, a silent Q, and an umlaut. <laughs> I, uh, I was gonna tell you, I wanted to, I have taste. Yeah, let's start there. Uh, I, uh, I, I rented a movie from a vending machine. That's, uh, that'll go well, right? And uh, the, the thing I love about Redbox is that um, it still has these old ads that I thought that had just gone away by the way, wayside years ago. They have like three standard ones. Uh, one, they'll have the guy uh, for the army where he just starts out like, I didn't get very good grades in high school, but now I'm with the Air Force. That doesn't make me feel any more safe. <laughs> the guy that got kicked out of the home room for touching himself and now he has drone capabilities? You know, that's not cool. And then, uh, th then the other thing they'll have is um, they'll say uh, piracy. Uh, yeah, they'll say piracy breeds terrorism. And I don't know if you know anything about pirates, but uh, they're really into getting wasted on rum and like elaborate treasure maps. And they really don't care whether or not I have a legal copy of Beverly Hills Chihuahua too. <laughs> That's not gonna help ISIS either way. <laughs> The, uh, um, I, I, I moved here uh, four years ago from Minnesota, and, uh, all right, fair enough. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you're from the Midwest. You, should, you Normally, we're very not proud of stuff, so, all right, cool. Um, but uh, I, I'm from uh, Rochester, which is uh, home of the Mayo Clinic and uh, nothing else. Uh, that's, that's the main thing going on there. <laughs> if a hospital could be a town, <laughs> you know? Uh, but uh, we have medical tourism I learned from, from, from you guys. It's, it's weird because it's like the number one tourist destination where everyone wants to leave as soon as possible. <laughs> but uh, we sometimes refer to, uh, just like you guys, uh, the, the, the tourists at Terrace, okay? There's an, un there's an uneasy relationship. I worked at this uh, bookstore. You're like, really? Bookstore? You seem like a eh, linebacker. No, I worked at a bookstore. <laughs> and, um, at the bookstore, this woman from Pakistan was visiting and showed me to uh, call her cab because she didn't have a driver's license. And so what I seen logically is that she didn't have an American driver's license. What I found out, good people, is that uh, no one, no women at all from Pakistan are allowed to drive a car 
Zilch. Zip. They even so much as try and take the test out of the DMV, they get stoned to death. Yeah, if my uh, friend from Chugak is here, that's not as fun as it sounds. <laughs> and uh, I asked the, 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 uh, the woman the reason for the law, and what blew my mind was she just replied, really matter of fact, she's just like, oh, because it's forbidden in the Quran. I repeat that again in case your brain hasn't melted. <laughs> She was letting me know, and so I'm just going to pass along to you guys, that when Allah wrote that book thousands of years ago, he knew ahead of time there was going to be automobiles. <laughs> and that ladies would struggle with her from time to time. <laughs> I, uh, I, I will, uh, I'll, I'll, let's do this. I want to uh, say that um, I've had several jobs uh, <laughs> in the time that I've been up here. Um, I can start, I just can't finish, that's my thing. Um, but uh, the thing is, the, uh, the main criteria, I think, for being uh, my boss in Alaska is that uh, you're an old dude, and you'll constantly remind me on a regular basis uh, that uh, this is not your first rodeo. That's the common thread. And uh, I have this dream, some people call me a crazy German, but one day I want to do the rodeo, but just that one time. Because apparently you do whatever the hell you want that first time around, right? Standards totally low. You could just like go in there, set the bar on fire, and have an affair with the announcer's wife. They're like, what are you doing? It's like, sorry, it's my first rodeo. But well, it does have a point, Bill. I'm Nathan Hall, you're the crowd. Thank you, good night.